Welcome to Afrocentricity and New Media in Africa, a monthly series on the status and role of new media in Africa. On today's episode, your host, Dr. Langmia, Professor of Media Studies at Howard University, will be discussing the role of WhatsApp for Africans on the continent and throughout the diaspora. My name is Uma Langmia. I am a Professor of Media Studies at Howard University, Washington, D.C. And I want to welcome you to this episode of Social Media and Africa. This one today is dedicated mainly to the use of WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp seems to be one of the most prolific or the most used social media platform in Africa. Uh, social media made its debut in 2004 and by 2009, uh, there were a lot of people that were really watching or tuned to social media in Africa. And in 2018, Facebook bought WhatsApp for $19 billion. Facebook bought WhatsApp from Jan Koum and Brian Anton, who were the, um, they were the co-owners and the founders of WhatsApp. Facebook bought WhatsApp simply because they noticed that there were so many other billion people or million people that were subscribed to WhatsApp, most especially international users. And these international users, majority of them were from Africa. There were over 100, and 100 million users of social media in Africa. Of that 100 million, 95% of them were on WhatsApp uh, platform. So we want to really talk about this WhatsApp platform in reference to Afrocentricity and what it does to us in Africa. So um, you may want to know that with WhatsApp, you have the possibility of texting, you have the possibility of recording audio as well as video, and disseminating it to loved ones, friends, and acquaintances all over the world. The good thing about WhatsApp is that it's quite different from the home or the office phone that were installed prior to WhatsApp because with the office phone and home phone you can only use the audio. So language is not an issue whereby you can actually speak your African languages on your home or your office phone. But then you cannot text. So with WhatsApp you can text and that is where the issue of language comes to play. And our discussion today is really going to focus on whether this WhatsApp that has been consumed by largely uh, Africans in Africa and Africans in the diaspora actually relates to some of our culture, our social norms, our economic and our political realities on the continent. Because now that it's gaining a lot of steam and many people are tuned to it, how does that benefit us? Or well, we are just marching to the tune of what comes from the West, we just have to consume what comes from the West. From the point of Afrocentricity, we want to know Afrocentricity is a concept, and the father of Afrocentricity, by father I mean somebody that has disseminated that concept of Afrocentricity by the name uh, Molefi Kente Asante. Um, he actually uh, explains that the concept of Afrocentricity is putting Africa on the center, putting Africa on the center of anything that has to do with the continent of Africa, any initiative that has to be carried out in Africa, Africa has to be on the, on the center. Africans have to be on the set. Africans have to be consulted. The realities of Africa have to be taken into consideration. That is why we are looking at this WhatsApp from the point of view of the Afrocentricity lens and seeing whether are we adapting some of these issues? Are we adapting our culture, our social realities to WhatsApp? Or we are just marching behind the tune of what comes from the West. So as I said, WhatsApp is gaining a lot of steam in East, West, and South uh, Africa. Most people are on WhatsApp. But what are they doing with this WhatsApp? That is what is mostly, uh, that concerns me. Let's take the issue of text. Let's take the issue of audio and video. What is happening with texting? The language is always a problem. There is the autocorrect. So if you want to write using Pidgin, you want to use Creole or any other languages, uh, WhatsApp will want to autocorrect it to English or French. And remember, these are all colonial languages in Africa. And so you, uh, several attempts have to be made in order for you to at least use any other African language uh, on, on 
WhatsApp. And then when we look at the issue of emojis, when you scroll on the emojis on WhatsApp, the emojis on WhatsApp are largely Western. The symbols are largely Western. Uh, when, but when you scroll on nature and animals, that's where Africa features. Uh, so these are some of the issues that are plaguing some of us who are the scholars of new media in Africa or the scholars of social media in Africa. How do we adapt our realities on something that most of us are presently using, like this WhatsApp? And so that, can, that brings in the question of dependency. With dependency, where people like Ali Mazuri used to say that Africa is actually falling into the trap of depending on the West for everything. Are we going to depend on the West for the next 100 years? How are we going to be on the forefront on any issue that has to relate to Africa? And this is where the issue of Afrocentricity uh, comes about. And again, how are we even using the WhatsApp in Africa? Are we using the WhatsApp purposefully to promote a small and medium-sized enterprise? Are we using WhatsApp to promote a basket weaver in the village or a fisherman in the village who is struggling at least even to get a net to catch a fish? Are we using WhatsApp in Africa in order to show the struggles of importers and exporters at the seaports in Africa? Or we are using WhatsApp in Africa to um, promote nudity, to promote uh, naked pictures, or to match according to some of the tunes of what is happening, or religious dogma, or some of the spams, or whatever thing that's happening in the West. That is where the problem is, because most of us who are on WhatsApp, of course, we have to link up with our friends and relatives abroad. But what are we sending to those relatives abroad? How can we use WhatsApp to end? to economically empower ourselves, to politically empower ourselves. Look at what happened with, with North Africa, where they had to actually use WhatsApp to assemble the people to at least have their voices heard. Uh, these are the kind of things that we will be talking in this series. These are the kind of things that we want to be actually questioning about social media and social media platforms like WhatsApp in Africa. Take, for instance, let's say WhatsApp was bought by an African or by collective Africans. Imagine the kind of billion dollars, imagine the kind of revenue that Africans are going to benefit. Why? Because Africans owning WhatsApp, selling information about Africa, they will be availing themselves of the realities, socio-cultural and political realities of the continent. And they'll be able to adapt to the realities in the continent. Why is it that when I say I land in a capital city like Accra, or a capital city like Kampala, why will my WhatsApp not automatically adapt to the languages, adapt to the realities, adapt to the culture, adapt to the times, adapt to some of the features in Kampala, Uganda? So if Africans were to actually buy WhatsApp, of course it's not difficult to buy WhatsApp, just like, uh, like, like uh, Zuckerberg did with, uh, what, with Facebook. We can all come together. If we are talking about the unity of Africa, that people like Kwame Nkrumah were preaching, or where people like uh, Julius Kambarege and Yerere were preaching, then we have to be at the forefront of anything that relates to us, anything that dictates our future and actually key for our, fu uh, uh, our future and make us realize that if we are um, embracing anything about our continent, we should actually be dictating the pace. We don't want our kids to spit on our grave. That, of course, why is it that we are embracing the colonial vestiges? Why are we embracing colonial languages and using it on a medium that we use in order to exchange communication and exchange realities among us? So are we adapting ourselves to WhatsApp? Are we trying to Africanize WhatsApp? Look at what is happening with other countries. Koreans have their own version of uh, Facebook. Chinese have their own version of Facebook. Middle Eastern people have their own version of Facebook. What is our own version of WhatsApp? What is our own version of social media? I know there are other platforms that are joining in Africa, and that will be the, 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 the talk of the next episode, which are also kind of following the footpath of some of the social media platforms on the continent. But are we supporting it? Those are the, that is the kind of thing that we'll be talking in our next segment. But I just wanted to bring some kind of food for thought, for us to brainstorm and see that if we are actually putting our energies on something that defines us, something that actually takes our destiny to another level. How are we bringing the realities of our social cultural makeup to bear with it? How are we making sure that it is actually empowering us economically, socially, and culturally, 
and making us not only as pawns but as players in this new media platform that has that, that has most people have been seeing it as globalization or the global village. Where is Africa? Where are we? And from the point of Afrocentricity, as I was talking about, that Molefi Kente Asante is talking about, we cannot be dependent for the rest of our life. Remember what uh, Thomas Sankara said, that he who feeds you controls you. He who feeds you controls you. And that is what the West is trying to do to us. Let us at least be players in the field. Let us not be pawns. Because that is actually one of the main problems that we are facing now with our consumption of water. We should actually make sure that as we are using WhatsApp, we should make our images feel. We should make sure that our emojis are also being represented, not only with nature and animal, but even with the faces that are being projected, uh, projected on emojis. Imagine an emoji of, of, of a face that is crying and smiling, and you send that to a relation, somebody who is outside Africa. That person is going to use his cultural lens on the continent to interpret that. Is it sadness? Is it happiness? And most of those faces are not even representative of the kind of faces that we know in Africa. So this is where we are. This is where we are with WhatsApp. And again, as I said, this episode was just a food for thought for us to reflect on any and any initiative that has been carried out in the continent to define us and to put us in this global media universe. Where are we in this global universe? Again, thank you so much for listening to me and I hope that in the next episode you will tune in. Thank you again. This is uh, Professor Kibumala. Thank you.